Hey, Shalom. This is your brother, Yuan Athan. All right, first and foremost, I want to give all praises to the Most High. Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shai, Bahashim, Rakah Kudash. I want to give double honors to the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. I want to say Shalom to all the brothers and, of course, the few sisters who are pursuing this truth in sincerity. May the blessing of election be upon your house. Today, we're going to talk about the difference between being family orientated and being a cancer to humankind. Okay, so racism and prejudice, and people often in this society they confuse the two. Okay, and we want to talk about if those forces of either one of them are present within the Holy Bible in the Lord's way. Okay, so first I want to read the definition of racism. Okay, it says racism is often entrenched in systemic and institutional practices and policies that create and maintain unequal power relationships between racial groups. The systemic aspect of racism means that it can influence the allocation of resources, rights, and opportunities disproportionately in favor of the dominant racial group while subordinating minority races, okay? So in order to even institute racism within a society, you have to have control over how that society functions, which of course, the so-called black, Latino, and Native American people and the speckled bird Israelites who too are under the curses, they don't have that power. We got to go to our enemy for one need of all things. And we're not going to have that power until the kingdom of heaven is established. Revelation 22 and 3 tells you, and then there should be no more curse. And that's upon the establishment of the kingdom of heaven on earth. Now, let's also read the definition of prejudice. Just so we can have an idea where we're going with this, right? You go read the definition of prejudice, <clears throat> which goes way further than just, you know, that being family orientated, putting your family first and giving them advantages, which you would expect a man to do. A man is supposed to be a guardrail to his family and create advantages for them in the earth. Now, prejudice is a complete lack of proper, complete lack of a proper trial or examination in a case or judgment, which may lead to physical or financial harm. Okay, now let's go read one of the laws that the Lord gives us, which the law, statutes, and commandments are our standard, the believer's standard, for what is right and what is wrong. So what we personally feel or think, you know, it doesn't matter. We have to align our uh, perception, all right, and our way and our thought process according to what the Lord's standard is, simply put, right? So in Deuteronomy 23 and 19 and 20, which is a law, it says this. It says, thou shalt not lend upon usury to thy brother. Now, usury is interesting. Okay, and thy brother here is talking about someone of your own family line, kindred, and specifically here, another Israelite. Because the laws were given to the nation of Israel. Thou shalt not lend upon usury to thy brother, usury of money, usury of victuals, usury of anything that is lent upon usury. But in contrast, in verse 20, it says this, unto a stranger thou mayest lend upon usury. Now, why is usury such a big deal? In the ancient Middle East, someone would lend you something and they would say, okay, you got to pay me back uh, that and a half. And over time, if somebody, you know, is, is borrowing enough, they could that debtor could become enslaved unto that person to where there wasn't any paying them back. So now you made a slave out of an individual. And the Lord didn't want that going on amongst his people that he chose. Okay? Unto a stranger thou mayest lend upon usury, but unto thy brother... Thou shalt not lend upon usury, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all that thou settest thine hand to do in the land where thou goest to possess it. Now you're, you're listening, you're like, well, maybe listening, and be like, well, brother, isn't it harming them financially? Wouldn't that be prejudice? But you're unmissing, and the point is, all the nations were giving their own lands where they could benefit from racism. They were supposed to be having their own, you know, land where they had their own government and things going on to where they could benefit from a group of people putting them first, their family putting them first. Everybody's supposed to have that to go back to, all right? So if you if you had to go out your way and borrow from another uh, another people, you know, you knew to expect usury. You knew to expect it to be on interest because you're not, you have nothing to do with those people. It doesn't mean that, they, that they're going to they're gonna beat you and treat you like shit. It's just they have, they're going to put their own kind first. What do you expect them to do? Their family. Now, prejudice, again, that's what goes on here in America. 
That's what goes on for the Israelite in the society in general. Okay? You're looked at as guilty in, ju in situations of judgment before, you know, you're even questioned or before evidence is even brought. You're guilty until proven innocent. Okay? And in our law, regardless of who you are, we're supposed to judge righteous judgment. We're not supposed to be respecters of persons in judgment. So that's different from racism. Giving somebody the family discount, giving them advantages to succeed in society is different from placing judgment on a person without even having the facts straight. Okay, so let's go get that law. Uh, we're not supposed to be a respecter of persons in judgment. This is uh, Leviticus 19 and 15. You should do no unrighteousness in judgment. Thou shalt not respect the person of the poor, nor honor the person of the mighty, but in righteousness shalt thou judge thy neighbor, which again is your brother. But that applies to people in general. You're supposed to judge righteous judgment, man. Deuteronomy 1 and 17. You should not respect persons in judgment, but you should hear the small as well as the great. You shall not be afraid of the face of a man, for the judgment is God's. And the cause that is too hard for you, bring it unto me and I will hear it. Um, uh, Deuteronomy 16 and 19. Thou shalt uh, not rest judgment. Thou shalt not respect persons, neither take a gift or bribe. For a gift does blind the eyes of the wise and pervert the words of the righteous. All right, so being respectful of persons in judgment is wicked, which prejudice often revolves around that, man. Uh, there's, there's no fair trial. There's no getting the facts straight. There's, not no due, there's no due diligence in weighing the matter. It's, oh, this person is a part of this group, or I perceive this person this way. They must be wrong. You know what I mean? So that's all. But racism, setting up advantages for it, those of your own tribe or clan or family line, the Lord is for that. It's, it's written in the law. There were, you know, that, hey, you're not supposed to put your brother in a bind or a hold. But if you want to lend an interest to another nation, you can. And that's just one example. We can, we can go, we can go all day with examples of the Lord being encouraging us to be for our own. All right. Um, the Lord's for his own. You understand? He only, he's only dealing with one family of people. Amos uh, 3, uh, 1 and 2. Uh, you only have I known of all the families of the earth. You go to... Uh, let me pull this up real quick. Whenever you hear us, you know, bring up the fact that the, the covenants are for the nation of Israel and we're going to receive, you know, immortal bodies in the kingdom of heaven, that's only for the, fam the nation of Israel. That's not for everybody. Okay, so again, there's a putting the family first, giving them benefits that no one else will get. You know, it's it's there. It's written. All right, this is Romans 3 and 1. It says, what advantage hath the Jew, all right, to the Israelite, those of the line of Jacob, that chosen seed? What advantage then hath the Jew? Or what profit is there of the circumcision? Much every way. Chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. Meaning the Lord communicates with them. Alright, through his men. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Is it going to affect what the Lord's plan is? And how he's going to have this story play out? No. Verse 4. God forbid. Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar. As it is written... That thou, mightest be, thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. Okay? So I use that example of usury to kind of loop in uh, what the wicked are doing in the earth. Okay? Now, whenever another nation tries to establish a one world government, the Lord always depicts it in an evil light. Because the other nations, they're not going to rule the earth. According to the standard of what the Lord deems right and wrong. They're going to rule it according to something else. 
which is going to be sin and which is going to lead to death. Okay? So when Nimrod tried to do it, it was frowned upon. And as Esau's trying to do it, it's frowned upon. When we go to Habakkuk 2, okay? All right, you go to Habakkuk 2, and we'll start at verse, uh, you guys know where I'm going. Start at verse 4. It reads, uh, 3, For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end it shall speak and not lie, though it tarry, wait for it, because it surely, because it surely, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. Behold, his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. And we know this is talking about, you know, the wicked, how they, they move contrary to everything that the Lord decrees is upright. Verse 5. Yeah, also because he transgresseth by wine. When you go to Isaiah 29 and 9, it talks about they stagger but not with strong drink. Okay, this is talking about the philosophy of the man, not the literal wine that you drink. It's talking about the weight that a man pushes. Okay, and this devil goes around the whole earth pushing his alphabet agenda. Pushing, hey, we all got to come together and just be one people. And it's not for the reason that you think. Um, he pushes uh, democracy. And he, and he lends to every nation. He sets up a central bank and he lends to them on, you, on uh, usury, on interest. You are young. Your lives are before you. You got to fight. Fight for yourselves. Fight for our people. <laughs> Mama, I have to cheat the tax collector before my own children. So work and strive for money. Money is power. Money is the only weapon that the Jew has to defend himself with. Oh, Mama. You are five brothers. I want you each to start a banking business in a different country. One to go and open a house in Paris, one in Vienna, one in London. Choose the most important centers. In your day, there will be many wars in Europe. A nation that have money to transport will come to the Rothschilds because it will be safe. Papa, you mustn't talk anymore. The doctor. I'm giving advice to our sons, Mama, that the doctor cannot give. Remember, unity is strength. All your lives, you must stand by one another. No one brother must be allowed to fail while another brother succeeds. Your five banking houses may cover Europe, but you will be one firm, one family, the Rothschilds. Oh, Forcing them to become slaves. So when he wants to push a democracy on the nation and he goes to that country and extracts their resources and lends to them at interest, he's making slaves of that nation. He's making slaves of all the people so that he can be his God. And he wants one world government. So when he makes a decree, it's for everybody. You see, and uh, there's a there's a clip I might run in this um, of Meyer M. Shell Bauer, who that family eventually became the Rothschilds, um, about how they even got started and how they were able to set up banks in all these different nations and fund the both sides of every war and basically lend to governments and make slaves of countries. And that's how we get to this point that we're at today. And uh, he's trying to just kind of finish the deed, finish the mission. Okay, but the Lord is not going to allow him to do it. Just before he thinks he's about to accomplish it, accomplish it the Lord is going to flip over the table as he thinks he's about to, you know, eat and, and you know, enjoy the fruits of his labor. The Lord is going to flip the table over. Okay, and that's written in the scriptures as well. Okay, uh, Habakkuk two and five. Yet also because he transgresses by wine, he is a proud man. Uh, Jeremiah, the 49th, 50th chapter, calls him the most proud. Neither keep it at home. Again, I touched on that, him setting up military bases and, and, and uh, propaganda, you know, campaigns up in every part of the world. Who enlarges his desire as hell and is as death. The conditions of hell, a hellish living condition, follows this man wherever he goes, right? And cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people now this is depicted in the light of being evil and wicked it's not depicted here as a good thing okay that we are the world spirit the lord isn't down with that nor was he ever you understand so 
when we, when we go through it, you know, there's nothing wrong with creating advantages for your own people. Now, there's something wrong with being a respecter of persons in judgment. That's wrong. But nothing wrong with, you know, setting up advantages for your people. And also, you know, the Lord is endowed with that, again, that we are the world spirit. He, he's divided the nations. When Nimrod tried to do it during this time, he divided the nations and confused the tongues of the people because they're supposed to be separate. And we're supposed to be separate from them. You know what it means to be holy? It means to be set apart. And when we mingled with these other nations, especially in this, this state, all right, in these chains of darkness, we start to take on their ways and be disobedient. And that causes us to be separated from our power. Okay, but when the Lord, you know, puts the, the laws within our inward parts, that won't matter. But we're still going to be separate in the kingdom of heaven. We're going to be governing it. All right, but we're still going to be separate. We're going to be set apart. That's all. So, Abarat if the spirit was with you, you understood the concept. And, uh, you know, it, it didn't ruffle your feathers and be like, oh, he's, he's condoning lynchings. And, and no, no, not that. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about being putting your family first, being family orientated, being for your people, and as a man creating advantages for your for your family. But then prejudice is something else. And that's oftentimes what people when they use the word racism, they're really thinking of prejudice. Okay. Well, being, you know, before before you the evidence or facts are laid out on the table, um, you're not you're, you're perceived as guilty. Not giving been given a fair judgment or a proper trial okay so you know Abba Ratzah, again it was edifying I want to give all praises once more to Yahweh Baha Bahashem Yahweh Shai Bahashem Rekha HaKwadash I want to give double honesty to apostles and the elders of Great Millstone I want to say Shalom to all the brothers and of course the few sisters who are pursuing this truth in sincerity may the blessing of election be upon your house Shalom